And now it's the kid against the veteran. The veteran Kenny Bernstein, the kid, rookie Pat Austin. Ah, uh, but Pat Austin has this man in his corner. Quiet, studious, Lee Beard. No better crew chief than all of drag racing. The only thing Pat may not have on his side is fatigue. Because understand, throughout the day, Pat Austin has been running two cars. There was a shot on the pits earlier. There you see the top fuel director that he's new in. Across the way, his alcohol funny car. Now, Pat Austin, just moments ago, was in the final round of that category. Up against Vinny Bartone over in the far lane. As he had been all day, Pat was sharp on the tree and out muscled his opponent to the far end. 601-233. Those are great alcohol funny car times. Now, Austin crawled out of the car at the end of the racetrack, was greeted by a crew member with a golf cart, and they raced back to the starting line to get in the dragster. How difficult, Don Garland, to go from one to the other. Oh, Steve, you have no idea how difficult that is. I take my hat off to that young man to be able to get from a totally different reacting and driving car and then into a fuel dragster. Understand in the alcohol funny car, you have two... Oh, Pat Austin on the burnout has exploded the motor. It looks like he backpedaled it. The engine was a little too high. He stepped back on it. It went lean, and he's out of the race. 30 years ago, on the grandest stage that is the U.S. Nationals in 1991, a young and super talented driver by the name of Pat Austin would nearly pull off one of the greatest feats in NHRA history. Not only was Pat Austin trying to pull off what is known as the double and become the first driver in history to win in two different classes at the same event, but also won the biggest and most prestigious race on the NHRA Tour in his first ever career start behind the wheel of a top field car. Austin, who was already a three-time world champion in the top alcohol funny car class at just 26 years of age, would come to the U.S. Nationals that year driving not only his dominant Castro GTX top alcohol funny car, but also the Castro GTX top field car previously driven by top field champion Gary Ormsby as well. Austin would actually take over the reins of the Castro GTX top fueler starting at the U.S. Nationals when Ormsby decided to sell his entire operation to the Austin family so that he could focus solely on his cancer treatments, which unfortunately returned that year after being in remission. Sadly, however, we would lose Ormsby not long after, as he was succumbed to his cancer just before the running of that year's U.S. Nationals. But Pat Austin vowed to continue Ormsby's legacy while behind the wheel of the Castro GTX top fuel dragster, and in his top fuel debut at the Big Go, Austin would put on a performance like no other. With his lightning quick reaction times, Austin would defeat some of Top Fuel's best, putting away Jimmy Nixon in round number one, Eddie Hill in round number two on a whole shot, and then Tom the Mongoose McEwen in the semifinals to advance into his first career final round in his first ever race in a Top Fuel car. Your reaction times are sensational. Everybody's talking about them. They can't even believe them. Well, it's obvious to, it's just like a fight. It's obvious to a boxing match. You go in there and you establish your ground rules right away, and that's to let them know that you're there for business and nothing else. So I think you like to throw the right hook and hit them on the chin and let them know that you can throw a good hook. Austin's amazing day wouldn't stop there either, as he would win the race in top alcohol funny car, defeating Tony Bartone in the final and putting him now just one win light away from capturing U.S. Nationals glory for the second time in one day. Unfortunately, though, going up against the Budweiser King Kenny Bernstein in the final round, the top field final will be extremely anticlimactic as Austin, who admitted to having trouble executing burnouts in a top field car with not a lot of practice and seat time, will pick an inopportune time to let his inexperience show, as he will bang the blower on the burnout in the final round, bring a heartbreaking end to a fantastic day. Lee Beard absolutely destroyed. He had put a brand new supercharger on that engine, as Don said, maybe a little inexperience uh, for Pat Austin, and you can understand why his first weekend in the car. And Pat has been very candid about how difficult it has been for him to do the burnouts in the top fuel car, especially after getting out of the alcohol car, where it's so easy. His father, Walt, I think right now feeling more for Pat and Lee Beard than he does himself. And to make matters worse, this is what will happen to Bernstein in that final round. Kenny Bernstein, the final run of the five-day U.S. Nationals, and Bernstein goes up in smoke. That even puts salt in the wound of a Pat Austin. Now he knows that all he had to do was stage and almost anything would have beaten Bernstein. Well, the crew anticipated a real good run out of the Austin car, so they pulled out all the stops. And they pulled out too many. A dejected Austin would take full responsibility for that mistake. But like the true champion he is, he would not stay down for long. Just two races later, at the Heartland Nationals in Topeka, Kansas, Austin will pull off that elusive double, defeating Chuck Cheeseman in the alcohol funny car final, and then reigning a three-time top field champion Joel Model in the top field final, with the near-perfect reaction time to make history, becoming the first driver in NHRA history to win in two classes at the same event. He would actually pull off the double for a second time not long after at the second race of the 1992 season in Phoenix, defeating his uncle Bucky Austin this time in the final round of Alcohol Funny Car, and then rookie Doug Herbert in the top field final to seal the deal. But despite the two double-ups, 
One thing that still eluded Pat Austin was that U.S. Nationals win at Top Fuel. Well, in the middle of a dismal 1993 season for Pat Austin and his team, the driver of the now Castro Syntec Top Fuel Dragster would come to the U.S. Nationals that year with some resurgence. Despite qualifying in just the number 14 position, Pat Austin would step up on race day, taking down Ed Dase McCullough in round number one, down to Snake Perdome in round number two, and then finally Scott Coletta in the semifinals on a whole shot to advance to a second final round in three years at the U.S. Nationals in Top Fuel and giving him a chance at redemption. Great job from the driver, great job from the crew chief and the car. What do you think? Well, I feel real good and Pat's really on today. And once we got the clutch working, his reaction times have came back and uh, the crew's just doing a fantastic job. We got the no-name crew over there and they're learning the game. Although Austin was now back in the final round at the U.S. Nationals, one could only remember the heartbreak he endured just two years earlier. But unlike 1991, in 93, with absolutely no trouble at all, Pat Austin will successfully execute his burnout's perfection this time, giving him the opportunity to race for that coveted U.S. Nationals title. However, Austin will still have his work cut out for him, as he will face off against top-field up-and-comer Doug Herbert in that final round. Ironically, Herbert would come into that final looking for a little redemption of his own, as he too was coming off a runner-up finish at the U.S. Nationals just one year prior in 92, losing to Ed Ace McCullough. This meant that the 1993 top-field final at the U.S. Nationals will ultimately come down to two young guns looking for a little vindication. It's Doug Herbert and Pat Austin, both of whom smoke the tires. It is Austin that recovers first. He bangs another blower, but this time in victory. The times don't matter. The celebration belongs to the Austins. And a very personal triumph for Pat Austin. Who could forget the whole shot victory over Scott Coletta? That's what did it. Not only had Pat Austin proven that he was one of the best levers in the business, but he would also show that he was no doubt one of the best pure drivers as well, as he would backpedal his way to a victory in the final round of the U.S. Nationals and finally righting his wrongs from two years earlier. What a season saver this is. This, is, this really means something. I mean, you know, we've been struggling, but we've been surviving. I hope nobody's forgot about us, but uh, we've been surviving. The Castrol Syntec, Dino Max, Red Wing, she's Ozone Bill is still here. And uh, I'm just glad to be surviving in Indy. I mean, you went in and you've won the premier event, and that's just with my hat off to my crew, my family. They are the premier people of today, and I just love being with them. Thank you very much. Brian? Woo! Congratulations to Pat Austin and that family. What a huge win today at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Although the U.S. Nationals win would be the highlight of Pat Austin's 93 season on the track, off the track just four days later, after his huge win at the Big Go, he would experience something even more amazing as his son Drew Austin will be born on September 10, 1993. Today, Drew is one of the best up-and-coming young drivers on the drag racing scene, having won this past October's California High Route reunion in Nostalgia Funny Car and running one of the quickest lap times in the history of the class. And can you guess who was Drew's crew chief during that race? Oh yeah, none other than his dad, Pat. I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more from the Austins in the near future. And with that, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching. Two years ago, Austin lost the race at this point when he popped the floor. But not this year. Here's Steve with a man who has realized his dream. If you like this video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more great NHRA content.